Yes. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Okay, while we're waiting for the next three minutes for everyone else to show up. Can, hi, Kevin. Can you guys tell me where you're from, your names, and what you do for a living? Because this will matter when we get into it. So, Rebecca, Kevin, tell me where what you guys do for a living, why you guys are here. Anyone? Ashita. Hi. Kendra. Hey, girl. You made it. From Arizona. Brampton, FST and PT, awesome. Anyone else? From India, we got New York, FST. Uh, I don't wanna ruin your name, is it Hement or Hement? Which one's the first or the second one? From Trinidad and Tobago. We have Catherine is a plant-based chef. I meal prep for clients to help reach their goals. So, Mando from Toronto. Cool, Ellen from Vancouver. We got people from all over. This is awesome. Just wanna check the time. Make sure we're good for time. I hope you guys have an hour carved out for today. I hope I do everything in an hour. This is my first time going through the slides as a presentation. Catherine from New York. Dope, dope, dope. And uh, we got one more minute, so we'll let all the stragglers roll in. Thank you guys for being super patient about signing up. Yesterday we had a bit of another tech glitch. For some reason it wasn't taking everyone's registrations, but got figured out. So why don't you guys tell me uh, in the last minute we have if anyone is, um, what's it called? If anyone is has a email campaign or email marketing system that they use and that they use sort of to, to drive them to something like this, like a free webinar or your promos and things like that. Let me know. Uh, hey, Kendra, first time using Zoom and I'm supposed to be able to see everyone else's response in the chat. No, you aren't. I, I think there's a way for me to show it, but I don't know how. So if you guys want to see each other's questions, so you'll see if you, click on your the navigation bar for Zoom, there's a Q&A. So I'm gonna have you all ask your questions in the Q&A. Um, and then I'm going to address them at the end of our webinar. We do have a Q&A. So hopefully this all goes well. No email campaign, okay. So we don't really talk about email campaigns here, but in my, I think, are you part of my Up Your Insta Game course? Up Your Insta Game course, we go over how to exactly set up your email campaigns and things like that. If you don't know what an email campaign is, don't worry. I don't want you to, to overwhelm yourself right now. Let's just focus on how to raise your rates. Okay, so it is 12.10 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all for coming. I'm really excited that you're here. Okay, you're intent on enrolling in your IG course. Yes, I love that course. I spent days, weeks, months working on it. It's, it's quite incredible. Okay, how to raise your rates, masterclass with the stretch therapist. I don't know what rates you guys are charging right now, but I want you guys to give me hands up, put in the chats. Is your rate something that you're really proud of right now or are you dying to increase? Are you happy with how much you are charging? Tell me in the chat here, I have the box in the corner. Okay, all right. So we're, what we're gonna go through today is selling your service and product. What exactly does that mean? And things to ask yourself. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is what exactly are you selling? And now we're gonna later talk about exactly what that means and how to hone in on the messaging for that. What is the service and product that you are selling? Who are you selling to? Far too many people that I coach don't actually know their demographic. They might you might have a vague understanding of who it is. However, we really need to know what their name is, what kind of car they drive, what kind of books they read. We really need to get in their head. Okay. Are you speaking their language? So if you look over your emails that you send to your clients or your Instagram, your social media, how are you speaking to them? Are you speaking in their language or are you just speaking in your language, right? What's your story? 
<clears throat> we're going to talk about how to figure out what your story is and how to spread that effectively to your demographic. Are, is your audience hooked? How can you hook them? Are you good at what you do? I imagine all of you here are good at what you do. That's why you're here, because you're trying to showcase your value through your rate. <clears throat> So we will talk about that as well. And can others vouch for you? Do you guys collect testimonials and how do you collect them? We'll go through all the different types. What are their pain points? Do you know your demographics or your target audience pain points? You need to know it to a T. So you should be able to go like, yep, I know what that is. Here is the solution. So what is the solution? And can you clearly articulate to your audience what that solution is? How can you add additional value? We're really going to talk about how to set yourself apart from all the other trainers out there or stretch therapists or um, meal-based chefs. How do you establish your credibility? Are you guys really working on that? Are you establishing your credibility publicly so that people understand who you are and what you do? Because if you don't, how do they know that you're good? other than coming to you for the service or the product you provide, but what's going to drive them to come to you? Okay. So as I promised, those of you here on the live, you're going to get a free download. It's a raise your, bleh, raise your rates worksheet. And it's a couple of pages long, but it's charts and, and questions and questionnaires uh, to help you figure out how much you should be charging. So we really break it down. It's all simple stuff. It's, all of this that we're gonna go through today is probably stuff you already know, but it's just nice to be reminded and to have everything nice and organized laid out for you. Okay, and then after we go over how to raise your rates, I wanna share with you some of the exciting projects that will help you grow your biz and that we're doing here behind the scenes here at The Stretch Therapist. I don't know if you've already seen, but we release my uh, floor-based assisted stretch system, the performance stretch system. We're getting amazing feedback and every time we make it better and better. And it's a really fun course. So if you are in the fitness and wellness industry and space and you're a yoga instructor that wants to add value and give your clients better assists during class, or if you want to give your training clients a little special treat at the end, this is definitely a class for you, no table involved. And then I'm going to go over why the Up Your Insta Game is something that I would really recommend you continue forward after we do this webinar. Okay. If you don't know who I am, I'm Sarah Mariano, and I am the stretch therapist on Instagram. And my mission is to, is to educate as many people as possible on how to utilize their body and their mind to the fullest potential. I believe that's where the magic happens, and I'd love to show you how I've done it. Okay. I'm gonna go over some of the milestones so you have a better understanding of where I'm coming from. So all of this started, the stretch therapist started back in June 2016, which is just over three years ago. And I was a personal trainer for a very long time and I wanted to add more value and I wanted to help my clients in a different way. I was no longer passionate about fat loss and I wanted to feel like I made a difference in their life, not just through aesthetics or weight loss. I wanted something deeper. I wanted to help them move their bodies the way that they were supposed to. So I pivoted my personal training business to solely stretch therapy in June, 2016. And it was a little scary because I lost all of my training clients and I knew that was going to happen. And I had that summer a drop in revenue, which I knew and I had accounted for. So we're going to talk about prefacing your clients when it comes to raising your rates and giving yourself some time and some ample time to set yourself up and organize yourself better in your business. And then a month later, focusing on building myself as a stretch therapist, I was contacted by Harley Pasternak. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but he is a celebrity trainer from Toronto, he's moved to LA and he's worked with amazing people like Kim Ye, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, et cetera. And he actually contacted, contacted me via Facebook because he saw my videos. And he's been a really great, great client and has referred me a number of people over the years and still does, he is great. 
And then September 2016 of that year, I started to take Instagram really seriously. I spent that summer watching a ton of webinars like you are watching this right now and learning and understanding how to really optimize such a great platform. And I finally hit my stride in 2016 testing different uh, posts and um, styles. Okay. And then in May of 2017, so not even a year later, when I started all this, I finally hit my dream of stretching Will Smith. It was a dream come true. That's a whole other story. I've told it a million times, but if you're if you'd like to hear that whole story and our encounter and his reaction after, um, I'm happy to tell it another time. Okay. And then in summer 2017, so soon after, I embarked on the stretch tour. So if you're new to following me, the stretch tour is this concept where I traveled all of Canada and with, because I was uh, using Instagram and it served me very well, I was able to develop a lot of followers who would book with me when I would come to their city. So that was really fun. And then August, 2017, right after the stretch tour, one of the largest rappers in the world became my client. That was really awesome. He, I think it, I was in the middle of my stretch tour and he flew me to London, UK. That was really cool and we've been in touch since. So it was, uh, it's been quite a ride, I must say. And then in 2018, I hired my first two team members. Oh, forgive me. Actually, I already had an admin, but I hired an actual therapist to stretch with me. And then I was able to increase to premium rates. And we'll talk about if you are intending to hire a team, we don't really get into team building here. It's more specifically about your rates, but I guess I could do another webinar that talks about, you know, adding team members and then how that can help boost your rates to a premium. <clears throat> and then in 2019, last year, we grew the team quickly. I brought on a COO, I don't know if you've met her yet, Camille, and we grew the team to nine. And we have two locations and we built four online programs. And now, January 2020, so last month, we officially released a performance stretch system. It was incredible. And we finally hit 100K on Instagram and that's been a number I've been chasing for many, many years and it took a lot of work. And we finally was able to do it organically. All right, and then in 2020 of this year, we're really gonna focus on the educational component, hence this webinar. I wanna give back to all of you and really push the performance stretch system because it's my baby. And 2021, we're gonna do a stretch to revival and that is an elevated version of the original stretch tour and I'm not really gonna get into it yet because it's still under works but I will reveal more in due time. And again, in 2021, we have more confidential projects. Again, I will release when it's ready. And hopefully that includes stretching the rock. Cause as you know, that has been a goal of mine for many, many years. Cause I love them so much. All right. So, oops, let me just move the chat here. Okay. So how do you raise your rates? How do you set them and raise your rates? That's why you're here. And it begins deeper than you think. So it's more than just changing the rate on your page or telling your clients it's a lot more than that. So what sets you apart? What we're gonna talk about first is what you are selling. All right, so whenever I ask people, what do you sell? They always say, oh, um, I sell personal training. No, you don't. We're gonna talk about what you actually sell. So which one are you? Do you sell a product or a service simply? Or are you selling them a solution to their problem? Or are you selling them a way of life? So I hope you understand why I ask these questions. So if you're simply selling a product or service, that might not be deep enough to burrow into their minds about how you can help them. You need to show them exactly how you can help them. So the next step would be, what is the solution to their problem? So you've 
have to identify their pain points and then show them, hey, here's a solution to your problem. However, that's not enough. You need to go a step further, which is where we bring you to a way of life. So how can you show them that your service or your product is going to improve their way of life? How are you going to show them that what you offer is actually life changing and effective? Okay, so when when you ask yourself, what are you selling? I want you to think bigger. I want you to think I am selling a way of life. And what does that entail? That does entail, entail a solution to the problem. It's going to make their life overall easier maybe. And um, how, does, how do you do that? Through the product or service you're selling. I hope that makes some sense. Feel free to ask questions in the chat, or sorry, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A bar and then I will, re, uh, I will answer them later on. All right, so what now we're asking the question, what is your service or your product? Now, a lot of you here are probably in the fitness and wellness space. If you're not, that's okay. This all sort of ties in together. What is your service or product? Is it therapy? So are you an energy healer? Are you a psychologist or a um, massage therapist, a body worker, some type of uh, therapy? It doesn't have to be body work. Or are you coaching? Do you do online business coaching? Do you do fitness coaching in person, like personal training? Do you con do consulting? You really have to learn how to categorize who you are and what you do and what your service and business or product is. Or is it a physical product? Do you sell yoga mats, apparel, or a device or something? Okay. So do you see the difference? What are you selling versus what is your service and your product? So I want you guys to write that down and try and figure out what that is for you right now. Um, in the worksheets, you're going to be able to answer all these questions uh, on your own. So let's make sure that we stay focused with the concepts, okay? Because the concepts are not on the worksheets. They're what I'm telling you to, right now. Okay, so now we're going to talk about your demographic. Who are you selling to? Okay, hey, so you have to consider a number of things. What is their age group? Okay, and when I say age group, I don't want you to think of a vast age group. You can't possibly, and this is the thing, you can't possibly service everyone. And a lot of my clients, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want people to feel like that they can't buy into my service. Well, here's the thing. You need to specialize and you need to become an expert at what you do. And so the more specific your demographic is the easier it is to a talk to them in your in their language and also relate to them okay and that's not to say that you can service bigger groups and different demographics over time but to start and i've said this many many times before to start you need to start at a specific point okay so what i want you guys to do is really try to hone in on your demographic, see if you can make it a little bit more specific. So age, so think you can do an age range, but try and keep it, as I said, small. So let's say your demographic is between the ages of 27 and 35. I think that's a respectable uh, age bracket. And what is the population that you are serving? Is it moms? Is it CrossFitters? Uh, are they young professionals? Are they financiers? Are they people in accountant? Are they specifically accountants? Okay, the more specific you are, the better. <clears throat> All right, and lifestyle. What, so we're gonna, so three main things in your demographic, consider their age, their population, and what is their lifestyle like? I mentioned earlier. Do you know exactly who they are? What do they read? What do they watch? What movies, what TVs, what cars do they drive? Do they have a car even? Are they more eco-friendly? Do they like, are they meat eaters? Uh, do they have children? Are they single? These are all things that will really help you hone in on your messaging overall and to your demographic. And we're back to language. People overlook this. Are you speaking their language? You need to get in their minds, as I said. So thinking uh, like colloquial terms, 
are you using sort of the um, slang that they use? Can they relate to you? So when you're speaking to them through captions, et cetera, or in your stories or your emails or in person, are they thinking, oh, yeah, this person like can understand where I'm coming from? Do you talk about a common subject matter? So it doesn't make sense if you're, dem if you're saying your demographic is between the ages of, I don't know, 60 and 80, yet you're talking about something they don't really care about. You know, maybe they're talking about, I don't know, social media, how to use TikTok. And they're just like, well, I don't really care. How is that going to help me? So obviously that's a very skewed example, but you want to try and ensure that your subject matter that you're talking about and anything you do is cared by the people you're talking to. And relatable storytelling, storytelling, show them you understand them and their needs. So when you tell a story, so when you talk about your business, you tell it in a story form. You should be telling it in a story form. They want to know that you understand them and their needs. So you, in the story, you address their pain points. You address how you've overcome them and how you came up with a solution and how it's helped you in your life. We're not really going to talk too much about storytelling here. Uh, that could be another webinar, but I think the art of storytelling is really important in sales and getting your message across. But again, to tie this up, are you speaking their language? I want you to consider now when you're talking to your demographic, is this how they would talk to themselves? What's your story? So we're going to touch about the storytelling here just a little bit, but I'm going to give you a resource in which that you can read and watch yourself because there are a couple of books out there that I find incredibly, has been incredibly insightful and has given me perspective in my business. So can you get them to listen? So hands up if you have been in a conference or a public speaking event where the speaker is just droning on and on and on and it doesn't really make sense and you're not connected to their story and you stop listening, right? So let's really ensure that when you're speaking, they are listening. So how can you get them to listen? Well, your story should be relatable, as I mentioned, and you need to get them to know, like, and trust you. I want you guys to remember that. Know, like, and trust. Say it with me. Know, like, and trust. So you got to get your audience to know who you are. You got to introduce yourself creatively through a beautiful story. You got to get them to like you. You got to be likable in the story. You got to be sort of like the hero in a movie or a storybook. And you gotta get them to trust you. You need to, in your story, you are gonna talk about what you've overcome and how you can help them, but there's gotta be that trust factor, okay? A great question to ask yourself is, do they see you as one of them? Story, as I mentioned, common pain points. They wanna know that you've gone through what they're going through right? Do they feel like you get them and their struggles? So it doesn't really make sense if you talk about a solution for them, but you've never actually gone through their struggles. There's nothing worse than someone selling me something where they don't actually understand the story behind it, right? I'm sure you guys all agree. So I want you guys to write down your client's pain points and how can you relate to their pain points. All right, and triumph. You have to give them hope that they will overcome the struggle. So in your story, you talk about how you've overcome that and how they can overcome it too and how you can help them. Okay, everyone loves a good ending to a story. Am I right? So here's your recommended reading, Stories That Stick by Kendra Hall. It is a great, easy to read book. And I truly like the way that she gives you real life examples of stories in advertising and marketing and businesses that have helped them grow, but have that human factor. You actually care about these companies and you care about their mission. Okay. All right. Let me know if I'm going too fast in the chat here, because I, I can only see the chat right now. I can't see the Q and A's yet, because that's only after. We do have a new message here. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, great. Great, guys. Are they hooked? Is your audience hooked yet after you tell your story? So they must be bought in. So do you start to see this flow and the process of the buyers? What I, I can't remember what they call it. The technical term is like the buyer's journey. That's it. Okay. Engage. Do they feel like you're seeing and acknowledging them? So are you talking at them or are you talking to them or are you having sort of like a discussion? So you want to engage. You want them to feel like you know who they are specifically and that you are talking to them, okay? And that might require some sort of engagement. I and mean, it might not be, as you grow and grow and grow, you might not be able to talk to every single person, but they need to feel like you are. And how do you do that? All of these uh, principles I'm showing you up until now are going to help you get there. All right, do you provide value? Do they believe you'll improve their lives? You have to show them the value. You have to show them because they won't know otherwise. Another way to hook them, free info. So have you shown them exactly why you're great? So you have to volunteer information out, otherwise they'll never know, right? And who doesn't like free things? Once, when you provide free info, it's low risk, and allows them to see your value. And then if they buy into you and they're hooked, then you can go ahead and show them all the great things that maybe they would be interested in purchasing. Yeah, prove yourself to them. You, okay, are you good at what you do? I love this question because, you know, I consider myself to be, I try to be, sorry a humble person and so I like to ask myself am I actually good at what I do or if I'm not or if I feel like I need to get better how can I elevate my knowledge okay so you better be good at what you do otherwise you're gonna be doing all this marketing and then when the person comes for the service or when you give them the product they might be like oh this isn't even great so you're doing all this work for nothing so make sure you have a good product or service you gotta be confident about it does it show? So I'm going to give you a real example for those in the fitness industry, specifically if you're a body or actually trainers too. Actually, this will also apply to the meal based uh, chef here. Catherine, I believe. Do you exude confidence when you're presenting your product or service? Now, a lot of people, and I had problems with this early on in my career, I was great about showing them how passionate it was about personal training, and I was just like, this is so great, this is what you do, blah, 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 blah. But when it came to the ask, to the sale, my confidence just hit, right? So you need to be confident through the entire process. I want you guys to consider, are you confident through the entire process? Because we're gonna need that confidence when you increase your rates. Are you good at what you do? So do you do continuing education? Do you update them and sh uh, do you update your audience or your demographics or your clients about your continuing education and do you share this new round knowledge? So I think another great way to showcase your value to your clients is when you're taking a new course. You need to let them know these things, otherwise they don't understand why you're raising your rates, right? So even just sending out an email or talking about it in your sessions or when you meet up with them to drop off your product, et cetera, you need to let them know that, hey, guess what? Like I've been taking this incredible course. It's by this a, a guru at blah, 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 blah. And it's amazing. This is what it's done for me and my current clients that I've been working on. It's so effective. I'm really excited to share this with you. And that could be a preface to when you start to raise your rates. All right, so are you good at what you do and do you get that feedback? What people don't realize, and I didn't realize you could do this for some reason, even though it seems so simple, is that you can involve them in improving your offering. You can ask, and the great thing about technology now, even with just email and social media, you could ask them, hey guys, like what did you think of this? Or what do you think of this? I'm thinking of doing this, what do you think? Or how, you can even ask them outright, how can I improve? And can you be specific? And then you give them like, here are the ways I'm thinking to improve. What do you think? 
So I like to do a lot of surveys and feedback forms and um, talk one-on-one. Actually, my favorite thing is to get the feedback in person or on the phone. So yeah, in order to increase your rates, you gotta put in the work. You can't just expect to raise it and people will come. You have to actually follow up and nurture them. Hmm. Can you get others to vouch for you? So the ultimate testimonial, I'm sure you know, is word of mouth. And I'm sure a lot of you get that now, but we're also gonna talk about other ways to increase uh, client flow coming your way. So obviously testimonials. Collect and you must showcase. So there are a lot of clients I have that like, yeah, I've collected so many testimonials all over the years, but they've never showcased it anywhere. Like it's barely on their site. They don't put it on their Instagram or their Facebook or whatever social media they use, platform they use. You need to showcase it. And don't worry, you're not showing off. You're trying to show people, hey, like this stuff can help you in your life. I'm proud of what I do. There's the confidence. I'm proud of what I do. And I feel like this can help you. Here's a testimonial in case you don't believe me. Come in for a whatever or try this product. Reviews are another. Okay, hands up if you guys love reading reviews for anything you buy on Amazon or even on YouTube, on TripAdvisor, etc. I love reading reviews. So you need to encourage your clients, your best clients, to give you a review. And that could be a Google review, that could be a, I don't know, a Facebook review, or a, what else is out there? You know, if, if your business is in travel, it could be a TripAdvisor or Yelp. Oh, Yelp, Yelp is a big one too. So encourage them to give you a review. You need to follow up with them. And when you give them that review, and I talk about this more in the Up Your Instagram course, and in the personal, or sorry, and in my live performance stretch system course, there's also a business day where we talk about all of this for five hours, like everything, how I grew my business, et cetera, not just how to raise your rates. But I show you exactly how to encourage them to get the reviews. You need to send them specifically the link. And what helps is actually writing out something for them. Because some people are so busy now, right? I'm sure you've asked your clients, hey, can you give you a review? And they never do it. Or, hey, can you give me a testimonial? What I've gotten to do is write out a quick template and say, hey, here's what I'm thinking of. Or here, can you post this in your Google review? Feel free to use this or you can change it up. You want to make it as easy for them as possible so that you can get them to do it. And referrals. So you want to become the talk of the town. So you need to get those referrals. So encourage them, say, hey, and this is just an example. Hey, you know what? You've been a loyal client of mine. If you know anyone that you feel like this could help them, please, I would appreciate it if you share this with them. And then you can say, is it okay if I send you an email um, with uh, a written sort of uh, template that you can copy and paste and send to your other friends. That's some, or send to your people you know. That could be a way to do it. Or you can, in the moment, say, hey, you know what, if you feel like this could help someone else, do you have someone that you can write down their email um, that they'd be okay with me following up with personally? That's another way to do it. All right, we're almost there. These are 12 principles. These are 12 principles I've sort of wrote out on my own <clears throat> that I find have been really helpful for me. So number nine, what are their pain points? This data, as I mentioned earlier, should be second nature. You need to know exactly the pain points of your demographic. You gotta have a complete understanding of it. And this is because it will show and exude compassion that you actually care. And you actually know what you're talking about when you help them address their pain points. <clears throat> Are their pain points emotional? Do they, does it have psychological triggers? This is important because you need to get in their minds and understanding their psychology. Obviously we're not psychology majors, but if you can understand, if you can read people, if you can understand and read their emotion, that can help you in closing a sale or presenting um, information to them. And obviously, it allows you to connect with them, they can feel it. Or is their pain points physical? Do they have body pains? This you probably um, will 
resonate with the fitness and wellness workers here. But also, actually, it can also help with nutrition. Sometimes we have physical, they may have physical pains because their diet's not right. Okay. Is their pain point life? Like, is something happening in their life? How can your service or product help affect their, their lives to remove that pain? Okay. What is your solution? Now, has everyone been able to write out exactly the solution to these pain points in a succinct one sentence? So in the um, appearance of the game, we talk about exactly how to write out your why and your mission statement and um, your grunt test, which is sort of what exactly you do in your messaging and what you put on your IG bio, et cetera, in one clear sentence okay solution you must convey what you have that you have the perfect solution clearly okay so what is it what how do you help them with this particular service and product how do you help them what are the features what are the steps what is the outcome so for example stretch therapy the, the service is stretch therapy the solution to your problem is stretch therapy and this is how we do it. We do an assessment, step one. Step two, we do the stretch. Step three, we give you homework. And then the outcome is all these amazing results. Okay, how do you do it? Do you do, are you an online coach? Do you do it in person? Are you a trainer? Okay, you gotta let them know how it happens, right? Do they come to you and when? let them know how soon they can expect results this is important because people want to know that there is an end there is a they're going to reach their goals there's going to be an outcome they're going to get results so you got to let them know when and you got to be honest about it okay 11 how can you provide value oh how can you provide added value this should be ongoing. You should always be asking yourself, how can I provide added value to my clients, especially if you're planning to raise your rates, let's say every year or every twice a year, okay? All right, so knowledge. Do you read and research theory ongoing? Do you take courses? Do you improve your skill set? Do you take practical courses? Do you learn or are you shadowing from someone better than you? Or do you have a mentor in your industry that helps you become better? Do you practice with your colleagues? Do you get feedback all the time? And another great way to add value is through tools. Like explore what tools can improve your client's experience. We are gonna talk about the client experience later, but it, having digital copies, using video platforms or sending them videos automatically, where you automate it so that it's easy for them to consume. Think about all these things and they can be quite simple if you think about it, okay? So if you're giving them homework, maybe it's a video series that instantly sends to them after they're done, something like that. And the last one is how do you establish your credibility? You gotta put yourself out there. I know it can be really scary and you gotta put in the work. So how can you do this? Start with your local community. Your local demographic should know who you are, right? You should be introducing yourself to uh, your demographic in your city. And you should be doing talks if you can, or uh, meeting people at the gym, things like that. You gotta put yourself out there. Or you contact business owners, okay? Establish a relationship. Another way to establish your credibility is through online, your online presence. You gotta create the content that I talked about and share it consistently. Again, you're not boasting, and I know this was a common issue with a lot of my clients, but you're not boasting. You're trying to show people, hey, I can help you. I want to make your life better. You gotta share it consistently. The worst thing you can do is post one thing uh, in January and then not post until March. You have to do it consistently because Everyone is inundated with technology and information now. You've got to stay top of mind. So it is, it is a lot of work. Another way to establish creative, uh, credibility is through publication or media. So a great way to do this is contact third-party outlets to share your story. So you can be featured on blogs or on um, podcasts or 
try to get on TV, things like that. And of course, social media. Social media, I mean, I have a love-hate relationship with it, but it is a great platform. It is free. It is a free way to share your story. So use it. I remember, you know, when I was in my 20s or even college, I would cold call people or would knock on people's doors. That is the worst. I'd rather have social media than try and knock on people's doors or call people who don't want to talk to you. Okay. All right. So those were the 12 principles. I know it seems like a lot of information and it's already 1248. So let's try and speed this up a little bit. <clears throat> What is the industry standard? So you have to ask yourself, when we're talking about raising your rates, what is the industry standard? Knowing the industry standard, wow, I can't speak. Knowing the industry standard will create a baseline for you to work from. It helps you to keep things in perspective and allows you to be realistic while taking risks. And this is specifically about raising rates. So we're gonna talk about what do you want to charge, okay? You want to think, what I like to do, and this is one way to do it, is think of the annual revenue you want to, um, want to make and then reverse engineer to get your hourly rate. I'm going to show you two ways that you can figure out what you want to charge and if it's realistic. Let's do the math. So let's bust out your calculators you have on your phone, etc. Again, I, in the worksheets, you'll have time to do this on your own. All right, so as I mentioned, let's figure out how much do you wanna make in the year? So let's say, okay, wait, before I give the example, I'm gonna go over the, the, give you an overview. You wanna ask how much you wanna make in a year? How much does that mean monthly? How many appointments can you handle in a week? People don't realize like, can you even handle, you know, 30 appointments in a week? Or if you're in meal service, like can you handle creating, you know, I don't know, 200 meals a week? What is the hourly rate? Uh, sorry, once you figure out all this, then you will get your hourly rate. So here is a formula. Don't worry, this will be in the worksheets, but you can write this down if you like. Desired annual income divided by 12 months, divided by four weeks, divided by desired number of appointments, and you will get your hourly rate. It's estimated, obviously. This is estimated rates and numbers. Okay, so this is a great baseline to start with. So let's say you do all this and you're like, ooh, I don't want this as an hourly rate. Then you can start from the hourly rate and work yourself up. And I'm gonna show you that example. So the first example is if we do it this way with the desired annual income divided by 12 months, divided by four weeks and number of appointments, you get the hourly rate. Here's an example, Tara, massage therapist. Let's say she wants to make 70,000 divided by 12 months, four weeks divided by, she wants to work 20 appointments a week only. This means she needs to charge $73 an hour, okay? From here, you can play around with these numbers, consider vacations, shorter months, etc. So you have to also work that into play. Oops, oops, okay. In relation to the industry standard, I want you guys to ask, once you do this math, how do you feel about this number? If you're thinking it's still too low, great, we have another approach. Okay, so this time you would do the de desired number of appointments times your desired hourly rate. Maybe you know you want to charge $120 an hour. Uh, $20 an hour times for weeks, times 12 months, and this will give you your annual income. Again, estimated rates and numbers. Another example, Amal, personal trainer. He wants to make 120 an hour with 30 appointments a week. And what does this mean for him annually? It means this much. So you probably know all this. I just encourage you to do these numbers every quarter if you can. So you can sort of see if you're on track, is this how much you wanna make? Is it realistic? Things like that. And when you break down these numbers, it actually makes things less scary and makes it less scary to raise your rates because you understand the math behind it. Again, play around with these numbers. This is meant to only give you a guideline. So now you figured out your hourly rate. We gotta consider all the factors um, 
before we announce these rates. Are these rates even realistic? Okay. Is it realistic to your demographic? Does this demographic even have the money to pay this? Is this something your demographic can afford? This is a really important question. So if you're targeting like high school teenagers for personal training, obviously who has the money? Their parents. So do these particular teens, are their parents in that, um, make the kind of money that will allow for this break? Related to your industry standard, what is the industry standard? Is it $90 an hour? Because then you can sort of use it as a baseline, say, okay, it's $90 an hour for the average trainer. I'm not average, I'm above average, so I'm going to charge myself $120. I think this is realistic, okay? Does your expertise and experience allow you to charge that rate? Have you only been working as a, I don't know, I want to choose it. Like, have you only been working as an account, a freelance accountant for, or just an accountant for one year? Or did you just graduate? You have to consider that maybe it's not time to charge at a premium rate yet. Maybe you have to have a plan to build up to it. Your credibility. Do people know who you are and can say, hey, you know what? This person is great. We've, she's built her credibility. I would totally pay $200 an hour or whatever, right? So we talked about that and how to create that credibility. Are you collecting reviews, testimonials, referrals? This is going to help you build your rate to a premium rate, okay? I mean, I think that goes without saying, it's pretty obvious. And do you actually get results with your clients? Are they getting what you promise? Or is the outcome true? If so, then maybe it's time to say, you know what, I'm killing it right now. We've got to raise our rates to provide more service, okay? And do you give value? As I mentioned before, are you constantly giving your clients added value every year? There's, it doesn't have to be anything major, right? It could be a little thing like, okay, you know what, this year we're going to send them a birthday card. I don't know, something like that. Or this year we're going to give out a free, I don't know, PDF, okay? so. Think about little things like that that will set you apart. All right, so these are just guidelines. It will require testing and plenty of proof, which you will have to provide. So I want you to, again, for refer to the 12 principles, I do put that in your worksheets. All right, and you wanna ask yourself, why should they pay this rate? I always ask myself, why should they? This will, also, this will help you build your confidence and also ensure that you feel comfortable with this rate and that you know your worth. Okay, now you're probably wondering, what about my loyal clients who are paying this specific rate already? I like to value my OGs. So you, if you're going to raise your rates, you need to communicate with your loyal clients through an email or in person or both and offer them a loyalty rate or discount if you'd like. So I do like to do that. I, say, I like to um, give them a loyalty rate that's forever theirs, okay? Um, be clear, and what I like to do is actually, my tip is to do it as a percentage because if you raise your rates to 161 day, at least theirs is also a little bit raised, but they still get the 20% off. Okay, so it's all about how you preface it. Be clear when you're about to raise your rates via email. So you have to let them know. You can't just switch it up on them. You have to let them know, okay? Typically, offering a buffer time of a few months is good practice. So when we raise, or when I raised my rates, um, I would let my current clients know, hey, I'm going to be raising my rates in three months time, June 1st, 2020, for example, and um, it's going to go up to this rate. And, and then if it's a loyal client, then you can say, you know, I do appreciate your loyalty. Please um, enjoy a 20% discount rate for you specifically. Okay. I do, I have written out templates uh, in the worksheets, email templates that you can copy and paste. So I do write that out for you. And that's your freebie. All right, now how do I communicate this increase? Okay, so this 
webinar is going a little bit longer than I had anticipated. I think we're still pretty good. We're still good. All right. How do I communicate this increase specifically? You got to give them proper warning. Are these, as we talk about, are these rates realistic? I think great way to do this is if you have a practice or a store or a website where people order things, put the, uh, a sign that's very clear and post it prominently, prominently uh, physically or digitally. You got to also email your clients and your email list. And an option is to post it on your various social media. Okay. If you do post it on your social media, it could be a great marketing tool in that you're going to say, hey guys, I'm raising my rates in June. Hurry up and book now or buy now uh, to take advantage of my current rates. I think that's always great to do. And surprise, as I mentioned, you are going to get email templates that are part of your free download. Yay. Okay. And... I, I mentioned this already. I just put a reminder here with your loyal clients, give them that loyalty discount and be clear about when you're raising your rates. Okay. okay. Next question is how do I elevate client experience so they feel like, yeah, I'll pay you more or yeah, I'm going to pay you that. How do I stand out? In order to set yourself apart, you need to have a unique offering, skill set, and experience. Okay, do you guys have a unique offering? Do you have incredible skill set and uh, a whole other experience that they'll never experience elsewhere? <clears throat> so first, it's important to know how people perceive value. So they perceive value through the experience. What is your client experience like? I want you to walk through the process end to end. So you I need to picture, put yourself in your client's shoes and picture what it would be like if they saw how they found you, how they booked online, is their booking experience easy, uh, coming to you is important, or let's say you do meal delivery, is ordering easy, and then do they get their meals on time? You need to know exactly what your client experience is because you are going to be your biggest critic. And you need to be your biggest, biggest critic. And also, they perceive value through your expertise. Are you actually good at what you do? Are you an expert in your field? What do you offer that others in your industry does not? Okay, so that's another way for them to see the difference in value for you versus your competition. Okay, so we'll talk about the client experience flow. I wonder if you guys know this already. <clears throat> you might. So, how are they introduced to you? Is it through an ad? Is it through your social media? They just stumbled upon it on the Explore page? Is it through word of mouth? And then next, once they are introduced to your work, what is the interaction like? Do they DM you? Do they email you? Um, is there any engagement or is it go straight to booking? Is there email exchanges involved? Or are they part of an uh, email marketing system? Okay, so they book. And then what is the communication? So once they book, do they get a confirmation? Do they get a follow-up? Do they get a reminder about their uh, delivery or their um, appointment? And when they arrive, what's it like? Is it like a warm welcome? Do they feel like, oh, I'm so comfortable? Or do they come and they're feeling uncomfortable? Or when you drop off, let's say, your meals or your food, is it when it arrives, is it cold? Is it, is it a good exchange? Are they having a good experience all around? And then of course, do they receive the actual product or they receive the service? And that's all you, you gotta make sure that shit's good. Now, a lot of people overlook the follow-up. So you need to follow up. So that could be a series of automated emails or you personally texting them or messaging them DM them or calling them or emailing them. You have to do a fo proper follow-up because otherwise you don't know if they enjoyed it or if they're coming back. A follow-up is a great way to set them up to come back or to buy a package or to continue to be your client. So and that's what I talk about, rebooking. Are they, after all of this, are they rebooking? So this is the full client experience. Oops. Um, <clears throat> you can take a screenshot of this because I don't recall, I don't think I put this in your worksheets. 
But this is really important. I want you to consider all these factors because if they have like a 10 out of 10 experience, your goal is to get them a 10 out of 10 experience, they're more likely to accept when you raise your rates. Make sense? Okay. So as we talked about giving that extra oomph, I want to drill that in your heads, continuing education. You got to update and introduce a new skill set or a new little piece of value every year or every few months. Here is a personal example in my business. So when I started my personal training business, I actually didn't start at 90 an hour. I eventually got to 90 an hour, but I started, I think I started at like 40 bucks an hour, something like that. And then I worked my way up to $90 an hour. Um, and then I was comfortable with that. I was selling packages, it was great. And then when I added a value, valuable offering with stretch therapy, I got certified and I started to offer this great little treat at the end or another option uh, like to coincide with their training. It was so much easier for me to increase my rate to 120 an hour and then eventually 149 an hour. And this is just like an example of the early days of my business uh, as to stretch therapy. Eventually, I was able to charge 299 for two hours to the general public. And this is through Instagram. People would book through my booking links through Instagram. And this is the rate they would see. And yes, it might seem crazy to you guys, but I'm telling you now, people booked. People book because I show them all of those. I did all of those 12 principles I showed you at the beginning of the webinar. I did all of those to the T and people booked without question. And that can be you too. I promise, I promise, I promise if you do all of those things. It takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. And now I only take VIP clients at a premium rate. So you can get there. If this is your goal, you can get there, but you can't miss any of those steps I outlined for you. All right, so as I promised, you stayed with me to the end of the webinar, you will get this free download, Raise Your Rates Worksheets. How are you gonna get it? Watch out in your emails. In your emails after this webinar, I think um, you should get it today or latest tomorrow, these worksheets, all right? Now, before you go, guys, I really wanted to show you all the things we're doing in the back end of the business, what we've been up to. It's, really exciting behind the scenes. So the performance stretch system, if you don't know what that is yet, it is developed for fitness and wellness professionals ready to elevate their client experience. So we talked about adding value and elevating the client experience. Okay. So I had this in mind when I created this. It is a floor-based assisted stretching program designed to improve mobility, flexibility, and performance. As you can see here in the background, this picture is taken from our first ever in November of last year. We got incredible feedback, and I worked with a board of Cairo advisors who helped me break down the system and every single stretch to, for its safety and effectiveness. <clears throat> this is great for personal trainers and body workers. It doesn't require much, just a bolster, a pillow, if you don't have a bolster and a yoga mat, you don't even need a table. And this course comes with a highly anticipated business mastermind. The third day is actually my favorite day. It's five hours where we help you. We actually walk you through how to create your a proper mission statement, your why, um, your vision, and how to set up your business, your web page, everything. Okay. Okay. And so this is specifically for people who are tired of the same thing every day, struggling to give more value to your clients. If you're looking for better options and opportunities in your biz, looking for additional streams of revenue, <clears throat> this is a great way to do that. Craving to level up your skills and knowledge toolbox. If you're feeling stuck with your client's program, because God knows when I was a trainer, I absolutely did. Or if you're yearning to join a, a supportive community, because we do have an online Slack channel where you guys can help each other out, and will my team and I myself will be in there. You are not alone. Please come join us at the Performance Trip System here in Toronto. Okay, this is just an overview. It has influences of yoga, rehab practices, FST, Z Health, Thai massage, MWOD, martial arts, and as I mentioned, a chiropractic uh, board of advisors. 
Okay. There will be multiple levels to this course. Currently, only level one is offered, and I will let you know when I'm offering level two. All right. And what are you going to get out of this program? A 90 minute stretch sequence you can take with you to your clients, a manual, an online video library for reference. So you see all the, the stretches we've gone through through the program. And as I mentioned, a private Slack group for online support. Okay. These are just some of the things people have said about the course. Congratulations. My body feels amazing. The system works. Uh, you're probably getting it. This is one of my favorite ones. You're probably getting it a lot, but I just want to say thank you for an inspiring weekend. There's some things a practitioner entrepreneur needs to hear, and I was able to hear them because of you. Keep up the great work. And then there's just a couple more here. Um, we get a lot of Americans coming as well. So it's pretty neat um, tribe and community we've sort of built over time. Okay. And this is exactly what it is. Three days in-person workshop, two days hands-on technical training, one day business mastermind, and one drug. All right. <clears throat> so you got two options here. So option one, you can pay in full for the full weekend, which is three days. And it's just in Canadian dollars. So my Americans love this. And you also have the option to uh, pay in two installments here. Really affordable, a lot of our clients appreciate the, the rates. And this is early bird rates, guys, so make sure that you hop in on these rates before March 31st. Cool, cool, cool. And lastly, if you can't, I'm finishing up, guys, don't worry. If you cannot join us in Toronto, as I talked about, I have a video online course made specifically for you. It's up your Insta game. It is incredible, phenomenal, I friggin' love it. And I teach you all the strategies how I got to 100K legit and organically and how I built my business around Instagram, okay? Again, these are some of the people who started to follow me or message me um, because I really built my credibility online. Cool? Okay. So for you guys, if you wanna get the up your Insta game, you get a code Sarah Training with 20% off. So keep an eye out for that email. Um, we'll give you a special link and then you want to put this code in. And then we got some really great reviews. Loving the course so far. Um, this is one of my favorite testimonials where he's like, I'm more consistent. You show me how easy it can be. I've doubled my following and gotten more bookings. I mean, what more can you ask for, right? Okay, so thank you guys. We are going to do a Q&A for those who are left. Um, watch out for the emails over the next few days that will include A, your downloadable raise your rates pdf worksheet to the link to join me at the performance stretch system live in toronto we've got several dates and three a special link to get 20 percent off my up your insta video codes amazing so let's see who's still here with me guys okay feel free to go into the q a guys and ask questions so ooh, okay we only have one question here anyone else I guess I've answered all of your questions <laughs> well feel free to ask them right now and um, let's see where the chat is okay question do you have a course that goes over your assessment process any resources that you have learned from or that you can recommend it's a good question um, Okay, can you guys see this Q&A? Uh, let me know if you guys can actually see the Q&A because I think sometimes you can't. I wanna make sure you guys see that. I'll um, read out each question so you know. Okay, so uh, over our, we don't have a video course that goes over our assessment process. Uh, we will, I do wanna come up with something in the future, so just sit tight. In, um, in terms of resources, uh, I would definitely look into taking uh, Dr. Craig Leven Levinson. He's got a course coming to Toronto and he does it all over the world. He's incredible. He's from LA and his course is his courses are amazing and he talks about assessments. I would also go with um, Dr. Kelly Starrett. He did Mobility Wad and now the Ready State. So write these down, guys. Incredible ways to assess. Another great one is neurokinetic therapy, NKT, and also one of my favorite ones is Z Health, and it's all about neurological 
um, uh, neuroscience and how it affects movement. It's it's quite wonderful. Kevin Bastin, when is the next performance stretch system? So the next one coming up is March 20th to 22nd. However, that's currently sold out. We do have a few spots left for June, um, June 5th, 6th, and 7th, 2020 here in Toronto. And then we're going to be announcing July and the rest of the year. Steve, join late. Will I be able to replay this webinar? So we will be uh, offering a limited time replay for this webinar, so you can absolutely watch this again. Hemant, do you think it's better to advertise rates per hour or rates or per session, which might be more than one hour? Okay, so this really depends on you. So how long are your sessions? Um, what is your demographic like? What do they prefer? This is a this is exactly an instance where I would say ask your demographic, ask your current clients. Do they like seeing a per rate or per session? Because I could tell you what I recommend, but if your demographic, I don't even know what your demographic is, Mont, but you would want to ask them. Maybe they prefer seeing it per hour. Maybe their mind works better that way, or maybe they prefer seeing it per session. But when you say per session, you got to be clear what does per session mean? It means, does it mean 90 minutes? Does it mean two hours? Because you don't want to confuse them and you don't, nothing's worse, right? Than a disgruntled client coming in and going like, oh, okay, well, it wasn't clear. You got to be clear, 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 clear. Okay. Any other questions, my friends? I don't know where the, oh, oops, 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 oops. Oh, we got another question coming in. Oh. Okay, uh, Mauricia, I hope I said that right. When do you know you're ready and good enough to advertise yourself? Oh, girl, all right. This falls under the question of your self-confidence, okay? So you can start to advertise yourself. You're good enough now, first of all, Marisa, you're absolutely, you're good enough now. And you can absolutely advertise yourself now. I would say start now. But while you're doing that, you have to start to develop that self-confidence. And I'm going to be the first to tell you, I, and I'm still working on it, I had really low self-confidence and really low self-esteem, especially when I started my business, but I had to force myself to learn. I worked on personal development, and we actually go through this in the performance stretch system day three business section. We go through how to work with your personal development and your business development hand in hand, because I get it. Like it was hard for me to raise my rates for so long because I didn't have the self-confidence. So I would say start now, Marisa, and also build your confidence along the way. Kevin, have you ever outgrown your demographic? For example, I'm in a gym and my rates have grown and my business dropped, although I've taken courses and added value. That's a great question, uh, Kevin. So yes, if you have outgrown your demographic, what's to say you can't open up to a new demographic? right? So you've been such a uh, specialist in this one demographic. Now you got to think bigger. I want you guys to think bigger. So I knew that I had to start small. So I started with the, I actually started with moms first. And that was a really great, um, that was a really great uh, population to work with because of course moms need to get stretched. I myself am not a mom, but I was still able to gain a lot of traction because I worked on the 12 principles gaining credibility now i knew i was going to outgrow that and then i grew to crossfit athletes and crossfit athletes were my bread and butter and like there are ways to transition or add and include another demographic luckily at the time i mean there are still a lot of moms who really hardcore into crossfit so kevin i want you to try and find an avenue you need to see angles that people wouldn't see this comes into like the bigger picture thinking bigger think outside the box be creative and block any excuses in your mind get rid of any excuse if an excuse comes throw it out the window because you're trying to think bigger you're trying to push the envelope so yes, open up to a new demographic. Maybe there's a segue into another demographic. Maybe it's, if your demographic right now, Kevin, is um, young professional athletes, maybe there's a young professional athlete who is a dad. I don't know, maybe you wanna get into dad demographic and target them. There are ways, you just kinda have to do a little bit of research. Talk to your, talk to your clients. <clears throat> 
Kevin, have you ever outgrown the area you work in? Absolutely, Kevin. This is why I wanted to build my online presence because I have a more global reach. So my overall vision, I, I'm always thinking bigger picture. It's not to stay in Toronto, it's to have a global company, right? And that's why I built my online presence. So I always knew that. So <clears throat> I, I've never really wanted to have a brick and mortar location. That was never my intention. However, if you outgrown the area you work in, absolutely, Kevin, you might have to try and find another, either another area or maybe you're thinking of online stuff. And the online stuff can also add extra value to your current clients. Now you just have to uh, get more eyes to see it online. The world is big on the internet. So you can never outgrow the internet. Frankie, I work with stretch zone. What do you think about the strapping system to isolate and stabilize certain muscle groups? Is stretching on a table less effective? Does your myth myth methodology affect the neuromuscular behavior of the body? So um, I, I'm also a fascial stretch specialist and we work, uh, a lot of our work is on the table with the straps and I'm slightly familiar with stretch zones, Frankie. I've not taken the course or been stretched by stretch zone, but I know that there's also. A, I think you guys have a unique midsection strap. Correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything wrong. I actually like having the strap system to stabilize and isolate muscles. Um, with my system on the floor, we use our feet. So we're using our feet and teaching our feet to help stabilize um, so we can get into effective stretches. <clears throat> so with the course, it's really fun because you have to start to get used to using your feet again. As this also helps you <clears throat> to um, wake up tiny little muscles that the therapists themselves haven't used in a while. And it requires a lot more flexibility and mobility, and you will improve over time as well. Um, it's I don't want to say stretching a table is less effective. They're both very, again, it depends on your client. Like, do they need a, a a table that works better on uh, do they need a stretch that works better on the table or can we do the stretch that's on the ground where it doesn't require much but just using your feet to stabilize or other um, other things that you can use to stabilize so I don't think it's more or less effective I use both table and floor so hopefully that answers your question okay so I think we are Ooh, we're 10 minutes over, which isn't so bad, right guys? Okay, well, thank you so much. I think that is all we have for today, right guys? Um, I really want you guys to make sure you check out your emails because I want you to take advantage of the 20% off. This 20% off link to the Up Your Insta game is only valid for the next week. So definitely get on top of that. And um, please join Performance Structure Thing. It's selling out really fast and I want to meet you all in person. And it's a great way to add value and I can meet and see your beautiful faces. All right, I think we are done. If you have any more questions, please feel free to email my team and we will answer you as promptly as we can, although we get so many, so be patient with us. All right, have a wonderful day. I love you all. Take care and, and see you later. Bye. How do I stop this even? Forgive me, guys. Okay, are we still on? Yeah, we're still on. Okay, <laughs> all right, now I'm heading out. Um, I'm definitely going to one of your courses ASAP. You're amazing. Kevin, amazing, please come. <laughs> Kevin says, take my money. When is the next month? Come in June, because summer in Toronto is, sorry, I'm gonna swear, it's fucking epic. Frankie, uh, you're welcome. And okay, bye Kendra, I'm sorry we missed you. You've been meaning to move to Toronto. Okay, well come, we'd love to have you. All right, I gotta go guys, take care, bye.